got. Hello, I've got someone with me here. This is uh, Feckless. Am I saying that right, or, or is it Feckles? It's Feckless. 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 Yeah. And you are a Lotro stream team member here. I am. Recent one as well. Cool. So, now, but the reason I... Well, I want to get some of the Lotro streamers on here as well, but also I wanted to get you on because you've been playing Lord of the Rings online for, you said, lar longer than 10 years. So that, I'm assuming that means, yes. like, beta, right? Yeah, uh, pre-beta. So how did you get into the pre-beta? Um, well, I actually used to play... Now, it was an old game now. No advertising here because the game is still out. Um, it used to be an 8-bit game. It was called um, Kingdom of Draca or the Kingdom of Draca. Now, it was designed by a old American university student um, and it came out. And then I don't know if you've ever heard of um, I, IGN or something like that. Yep, yep. IGN. So it came out through them. And being in the UK, back in the days of AOL, Pay Per Minute, um, and I used to play that game. And through there, um, we got through to, I think it was 2006, and someone through that game mentioned about Lord of the Rings Online coming out. Um, and they had the, the alpha, um, closed alpha coming up, and people could submit to... Um, going on to it, and hey guys, um, so I actually applied for closed alpha, and I never got a reply, and months and months and months went by, and then all of a sudden, one day, I, I got this app invite to going into closed alpha, and I was just straight at it, because I've always been a um, Lord of the Rings person. Um, uh -huh. since I was a kid, you know, I mean, I did book reports and stif stuff like that um, in English, you know, on Lord of the Rings. And, you know, so I got the invite, closed the alpha, went through to beta, and I've played ever since, you know, and it's always been my main game, you know, so. So what do you think's kept you around for 10 years? Um, t To be honest, other than the storyline, um, it's got a bit of community. 100% it's the community. Um, it, it doesn't matter whether we go three months or six months between updates or expansions or anything like that. The, the, the actual community you, you, you're with. The, and that's what makes the game what it is. Um you know, you join the kin and stuff like that. You join the kin, you've got the community, you've got everyone helping you, you help them and things like that. And you just keep going and going and going, you know. And it, it's not just me as a player. I think the game itself goes on through that because you help someone, they then tell their friend, come and play this game. You know, because this happens, that happens. This person helps you, you know, and you help them. And then word goes on and on and on and on. And it's just awesome. Someone said, do you remember what the level cap was at the very start? Yeah. Um, the actual level cap wasn't even level 50. The level cap originally was level 45. Um, and then after level 45, you had... Um, Uragarth come out, which was level 47. Then you had Khan Dam, which was level 50. And it was nearly, I think it was close to a year after um, Angmar came out, when the Rift came out. Now, that was one of my best experiences, and it still is to this day, when the Rift came out. Yeah. Nice. All right, so... Now, I guess, have you been playing with largely the same people all this time, or have you kind of uh, come and gone to different groups and all that sort of thing? Um, I'm, I'm going to say largely the same people, because I was an old Snowborn player. All right, okay. now that I'm, I'm guessing we're going to have some people in the chat that are 
old snowborn players and stuff like that. I mean, I, I know that I'm fairly well known through people that used to be on Snowborn. Um, Which we should clarify that that's one of the old European servers, right? Yes. And we're talking yeah, back yeah. back when the game on the European side was also handled by Codemasters, right? Yes, it was. Yeah. 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 Um, now, I mean, back then as well, it's on Codemasters, they used to have um, downtimes every single week, right? Um, it used to be every Monday, if I remember rightly, Monday or Tuesday. Um, there was like a five-hour downtime. Um, you know, so you'd, you'd get the downtime, and it was just to refresh the service. They would basically just refresh the service, and I still remember when Moria came out. I mean, you guys in America... You had Moria out for like two weeks before we had it in in a, in the UK, right? Or in, in Europe because they were fixing all of the little issues and stuff like that. You know that that they wanted the perfect game back then, you know. And it was the same even back through Ang Angmar. It was about the perfect game. It didn't. And we had Sapiens back then, and mm -hmm. I know that you got Sapiens on later. Um, so Sapiens, hopefully, fingers crossed, will actually guarantee this and corroborate it, that they wanted, unless it's a different Sapiens, of course, cause, you know, in the UK, we did have one Sapiens, it's different to the American one. Um, and they were always sort of like, we want the best for you. We want you to have the best experience and stuff like that. You know. So, did you play during beta launch week, someone says. If you remember the name of the hobbit who bought all of our pipeweed to help us hit the silver cap for a launch. Oh, I can't remember that. No. I honestly can't. Yeah. No, I can't remember that. No. Nope. I'm 42 years old. <laughs> <laughs> you and I both. Yeah, so. yeah I am. Um, it's, you know, I... I you know, my biggest thing that I do remember from going all the way back um, was when Rift came out. And as a king, we would spend sort of like seven hours a night. You know, over a seven day period, we would spend seven hours a night raiding in the Rift just to try and get the Rift done. You know, it took us about two weeks to do it. Seven hours a night, eight hours a night. Starting at seven o'clock at night, finish at two, three o'clock in the morning, wow. and we would we, we would actually go through each and every single boss, and you know you got your raid locks and everything like that, and it took us about two to three weeks just to get the bow rug down. <laughs> so, do you have a single favorite memory of Lotro? Is that even possible? Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest, the bow rug, the okay. bow rug fight. The, the right. Balrog in the Rift is my my uh, single favourite. You know, spending, as I say, you know, seven hours a night. And I, I just remember that we used to have groups of people go into um, Goblin Town, farming Goblin Town to get the barrel recipes, right? Because you couldn't earn money. You couldn't earn gold the way you do now. And you don't sort of like five, ten sort of silver for getting an item drop. You know, by the time you'd actually spent an, a couple of hours in Goblin Town, you'd only earn sort of like a couple hundred silver, right? But when you're doing eight hours of raiding in the rift, it would cost you like a gold in repairs, right? And what you would actually do is you'd go into Goblin Town just to farm the barrel recipes. Right for the earrings and stuff like that, and sell them for 200 silver. It doesn't seem a lot now, but back then it was a hell of a lot. Yeah. You know, and we'd go in there f farming all these recipes just to get repair money so that we could actually go in and farm the rift or to raid, not even farm the rift. We, we was actually just, just for raiding, you know, and, and that's my biggest memory, you know, and that's why I love the rift so much. It's one of the best raids to go in, and even everything to now, even though I love all the raiding, and everyone knows that I do end game content, you know, and I stream end game content with the raiding and everything like that, that the Rift is my favourite. 
you, you can't beat it on level. You know. So let's transition then to that, what you just said, that being streaming. What got you starting to stream, Lotro? Um, well, I started streaming Lotro, what was it, about a year and a half, now, two years ago. I mean, I took a little break for personal reasons. Um, now, the actual streaming aspect came into it because I knew a few people. They sort of said to me, look, have you watched so-and-so streaming on Lotro? So I went, check their streams out and things like that. And, and then I found the official Lotro stream and I started watching that. But for me personally, it was like, it, it's great. Absolutely love it. I love the way you can learn so much. You know, people that come into the game, you know, have, have never played it before. They, they, they can learn how to play a class. They can learn how to play this, that and the other. Um, and they get to learn a little bit. You know, you take the Tolkien professor. I mean, the amount that you actually get to learn about Locho Law and Lord of the Rings, the books, Tolkien himself. You know, you just learn so much. And even him himself, last week when I was watching his stream, he actually noticed something in the game that he's never seen before. Yeah, no, and he actually showed something that I've never noticed. Ten years of playing the game, I'd never noticed it myself. You just notice little things that you just don't see. You know, and I'm hoping other people get that as well. And it's just... It's fascinating. It, and I know um, when you was talking with Quartermaster U and some of the other guys earlier that you do notice things, you see things that you don't see. It, it's just, it's mind-blowing. Yeah. So, okay, so why don't we, before we wrap things up here, it looks like I've got, uh, got our next uh, interview in just a minute, so... Let me uh, make sure we get a plug for your channel and your show. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead. <laughs> what, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, can yeah, yeah. Find like, you? <laughs> yeah, you can actually find me on um, twitch.tv forward slash feckless, right? Or you can see me every Tuesday afternoon from 2 o'clock Eastern, right? Now, I'm in the UK, so... I mean, for me in the UK, you're looking, what, 7 p.m. Um, BST at the moment, or GMT. Um, and then one hour after that, um, yeah. Central European time. The nice thing for that, though, is that's during our work day. So while I'm sure nobody sits at their desk watching live streams, I'm sure there are a few people who do. So The timing yeah. is actually pretty good for us uh, workaday types. But. Yeah, because I'll get you guys in America <laughs> when you're on your lunch breaks and stuff like that. All right, uh, last question I'm seeing people ask in chat. Do you, what was your first gold? My first goal? Gold. When did you get your first gold in game? My first gold? Um, if they're talking about gold item... Um, I think they're meaning like when you got up to one gold in game. Oh, my first with, gold. Yeah, oh, yeah. God. Um, I, to be honest, I actually didn't get my first gold until um, Moria. <laughs> right? That's, that's how lethal. Pre Moria, that's how lethal the um, money market was. Or not just the money market, but um, when it comes to earning money off of drops and coin and stuff like that. Um, and I actually got my first gold by selling a um, a second age um, law master staff on the auction house because it was probably one of the best actual law master staffs that you could get because of the the stats to it. It was <laughs> I actually put it onto the auction for 24 hours, no buyout. And it sold for like twenty-five gold. <laughs> nice. 
Yeah. So you went you went basically straight from pauper to millionaire, huh? Yeah. 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 Nice. All right. Well, uh, Feckless, I really appreciate you joining me on the uh, show here today. It's really nice. Yeah. Thank you so much, Han. Yep. I'll talk to you again soon. See you. And hopefully I'll see all you guys next week on my channel or yep. on the Lotto stream, 2, 2 p.m. Eastern. Sounds great. And you can find our full schedule there on twitch.tv slash stream. In case you forget when that show is, you can just find the schedule over on our Twitch page. All right. See you, Feckless. All right, let me uh, see about bringing in our next person here. Do, 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 do. I want to make sure I get a... Uh, I don't want to call him if he's not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> yep, okay, there he is. Yeah, sure. Hello. I don't hear you. Not quite. One second. Okay. I'm not, I'm not hearing anything come through. No, he's he's working on it. Right. I got it. Yep. Okay. All right. Should this be good now. Yes, absolutely. So with me here is Sapiens. How you doing, Sapiens? Doing pretty well, uh, Jerry. How are you this evening? Well, it's and how is everyone else? Doing good. I'm hang, holding up just fine. It's not a problem at all. So are you, I kind of thought by more this hours point, to go. Yeah, well, at least at least two, three, probably three. <laughs> I haven't even made it in game yet, so we may extend a little bit. We'll kind of have to see how things go. All right. So the year is 2017. Sapiens is probably the longest hmm. tenured community manager for. You are simply the longest tenured community manager for Locher, right? I can't think of anyone who's done it longer yeah. than you, right? Yeah. Six uh, six years I was there. Yeah. From 2008 to 2014. Nice. So back in 2008, you were mm -hmm. a player of Lotro really from the start. Is that right? Yeah, I was. Uh, I started off in closed beta, um, played for the better part of a year, year and a half, and saw that uh, some of the CM team was leaving. And, and I actually will never forget uh, shooting a message to patients during a dev chat saying, you know, is it true that, that these people are leaving and the positions are, are coming open? She said, yeah, they are. And random curiosity said, good gig, you know, what does it pay? She kind of threw a number at me. I was like, oh. And a few weeks later, she reached back out and said, so were you interested? Uh, and then the next thing I knew, I was flying to Boston for an interview. Nice. And obviously it worked out. Yeah, worked out. I got, uh, I kind of got dropped right in the fire a couple of weeks before we kicked off Moria Beta. So I was like, hi, welcome to Turbine. We're going to set you on fire day one. <laughs> <laughs> why, why was it on fire? Um, it, you know, it's beta, right? So it, it was one of those things where, where I had maybe a week, 10 days to, to learn where I was and what I was doing and, and introduce myself to the community and then dive into a beta. So it, it was pretty much a crash course. Someone saying this is all one big setup to try to convince us Cordovan <laughs> and Sapiens are two different people. <laughs> It is true. We are. Yeah, yeah, he, we are. He has less gray in his beard. <laughs> Not that much. Uh, <laughs> enough. <laughs> Even though I have a five-year-old, you have more Legos. This is true. <laughs> I have the, the infinite and ever-expanding Lego collection. <laughs> a large portion of which, I will point out, is uh, Lord of the Rings Legos. Nice, nice. All right, so uh, you started, got the, like you say, crash course and, and closed beta. And... Yep. Um, transitioned into full-time community management of the live game and yeah. i guess what were those early days like for you um it was really interesting because it, it it was a strange transition to go from you know being a fan of the game to being a member of the team and i i will never forget i think my second day there um <laughs> i asked uh, i asked patients i said so which one of these guys uh, is Jonathan Rudder, uh, Barafon, because I was a huge fan of his and, and I hadn't met the whole team yet. And I was like, all right, the, we're, we're going to make that priority because I can geek out with lore uh, with Jonathan. And, and then, of course, um, 
And of course, I met uh, Mr. Pearson, and that was the end of my belief that I knew anything at all about oh, the Lord right? of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, I, uh... it is nice to have a walking dictionary of uh, everything Lord of the Rings lore related. It, it's really amazing. I, I will never forget uh, the one time we had a dispute on Twitter about a trivia question. I walked over and foolishly stood in between um, both both Chris and uh, Jeff Libby and said, so I have a question for you guys. And what was supposed to be a two minute answer became about an hour long conversation and debate about what the actual meaning of, of the question was. Uh, so that happened a lot, actually. <laughs> Nice, nice. All right, so you were, like I say, there all the way through the transition of Lochar into free-to-play. Um, yep. Clearly, that was a pretty big deal. That that was a big deal. In fact, uh, I was there through several transitions. Uh, the first transition was going from Turbine to, uh, you know, the indie studio to Turbine, the WB oh, studio. Right, right. Yep. Um, that that was kind of a, a big deal, and it, it meant we got to... Uh, to move out of our ever so fine offices where I believe you interviewed <laughs> yep. uh, into did, the, into the good ones. Right. I think, did I interview? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I did interview in the old offices. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, you and Serafina both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we, we went through that transition and then we went through, uh, the free to play transition, which was interesting. Um, because you know, uh, as is the case uh, in the industry, you, you go into the world with a plan. Uh, it does not survive first contact, and so you have to come up with a new plan. Yeah. And free-to-play was definitely the new plan. And uh, obviously things had been said prior to that that kind of uh, got people up in arms. But I think generally speaking, uh, there was understanding. There, there was understandable uh, upsetment from the, from the longtime players who, who thought uh, – we were going to take a whole bunch of stuff away from them, uh, especially the the people that had uh, bought Lifetime, and uh, we made sure we we took care of those guys. And you know, we 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 did the best we could to bring in as many new players as we could um, in terms of the community, as well as we could, so that we didn't just flood the community with with a bunch of uh, raging and screaming newbies. We we we, we uh, handled the transition as best we could with, with this influx of players and that kind of old guard that sort of stood the ground and say, you know, my yard, what are you doing here? And I, I think overall the community handled it really well. Yeah. So you also, I mean, you brought a number of firsts to Lord of the Rings Online. Um, <laughs> you also brought the lottery system. That's you, right? Yeah, that, that yeah. started uh, pre-WB. That was, uh, we had a really great web team that came up with uh, the whole idea of Lotro being this huge community-driven game. It should have sort of its own, almost like its own social media network. Um, and that became My Lotro. Um, everyone had their blogs. You had all sorts of uh, different things you could do on My Lotro. And one of the things that grew out of that was, was the lottery system. One of the greatest things that annoyed me for a long time. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. It's great on the player's end, maybe a little less great for the person doing the administration of it. Yeah. Exactly. It, yeah. it, was, it was all manual. I don't think players ever fully realized that, <laughs> that it was literally every last thing, uh, every last lottery, every last item. I would have to go and beg devs for, for the actual in-game references for it and then go beg uh, the web devs say put this in the lottery please <laughs> uh, and then I'd have to build a lottery around it then I'd have to remember what was in there and what wasn't in there so it, it got to be super cumbersome I had pages and pages and pages of, of preformed stuff and I was kind of losing my mind <laughs> but it was a blast the players enjoyed it and, and uh, it, it was fun for me to see people uh, you know react to the lottery system and, and the things they won or or the things that I snuck in there that uh, I'm hoping to this day the dev team doesn't know were in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they don't. Uh, <clears throat> so someone asked a question which is uh, mildly controversial, but I think also quite interesting. And that was, uh, let me see if I can find the exact wording here. I know I'm keeping you in suspense. Well, while you at look at that, no, I, at, here we go. Did, at at okay. which? No, actually, go ahead. 
No, I'm just looking at this one and said, are you aware that the lotteries are still advertised in the helpline on loading screens? <laughs> they oh, won't yeah. die. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just assume everyone's got a time machine, so you know. Right? I mean, yeah. You just go back. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so here's a question that I thought was, um, in some ways, a little controversial, but I also think really interesting. At which point of the game do you feel that you had to deal with the most negative feedback, and how did you deal with it? Oh, I can only pick one. Um, yeah. I. I I think in the life of any game, there there's several moments where where you kind of take a step back and go, "Wow, how do we deal with that?" Free to play was obviously one of them. Mm -hmm. I think, I think the the number one though would probably be the toss up uh, of when we took back the service from Codemasters, mm -hmm. um, and and we migrated everyone from Europe here. I, I know it's hard when when you become you know that entrenched with a with a company and, and that you've come to trust and that you've worked with and, and they had their own CMs over there uh, and their own QA uh, that would just validate our stuff. And, you know, it, it it's hard to, to suddenly be told, okay, you, you don't get to swim in that pool anymore. You have to go swim in this one. Yeah. Um, so that, that was a big challenge for a lot of people. Um, and I think probably, you know, the, the ending of the raids for a period of time was, was probably the next big one. Um, but you know, it's one of those things where you, you know, this as well as I do executive producers come in, they have their ideas of, of where they want to take things and what they want to do. And, you know, we, we just serve the beam as Stephen King says. <laughs> so we, we just pass the information. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad, but I would say those two, those two events are probably right there at the top. So what about the good? What, what, so what about what, so maybe uh, a top thing that you're going to re always remember here with Lotro uh, in your community work there? Oh, I, I, Jerry, I could cover for the next three hours for you. On all, all right. Good Sweet. things. Taking, <laughs> no, <it's>, all right. <laughs> no, um, yeah. it, it's, there's so many things. Um, the, there are, you know, first off, the team, obviously. Uh, I, I was so fortunate to have super smart people all around me. Um, making uh, my vote for you to get hired was probably a high point. That was yeah. pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> you and Serafina. Yeah. Um, but I think the community just in general, the, the, way they, the way they embraced the game, the way they embraced all of us, uh, the things that they did to show their support and, the, and their love for the team and the game, um, I don't think I'm ever going to forget it. I have enough stuff floating around here from them that I don't think I ever could if I wanted to. Um, between the sheer volume of food <laughs> that was brought to me at shows and sent to the building in my name and uh, yep. artwork that, that players made and sent in, thank you notes, um, cookies uh, in very nice ornate boxes. Someone made a donation to... Um, UNICEF in my name uh, to thank us for yeah. something. Just all of these outpourings of, of, of love and affection from the community. And, and of course, one thing that I will never forget, uh, because it meant so much to me because it was a recognition of the community, uh, was when the community won uh, the Dragon Slayer Award for Most Passionate Community, uh, right. I think in 2012. That, that probably sticks out because to me that felt like the community was being recognized for all the things I already knew about how passionate these people were uh, about the game. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's probably number one in my book. Nice, nice. So where does 2017 find you today? 2017 finds me, oddly, where I spent a, a lot of the six years I was in Lotro, um, sitting at my desk uh, on a Lotro live stream. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I'm actually kind of uh, having a lot of fun doing uh, the whole freelance contract self-employment thing. Uh, I've gotten to work on games I cannot mention, but I will say that several recent AAA titles uh, I got to be a part of, uh, franchises that I never thought I'd work on in my life. So that was, that was a great deal of fun. Um, I've been fortunate enough to um, help out uh, an indie developer um, that uh, went through a Kickstarter for their new MMO. Um, that's coming out in probably about a year or so cool. and uh, still working with them to, to put that together. It's in pre-alpha, but uh, it's pretty cool open uh, sandbox space P 
PvP game. If you take uh, take Minecraft and uh, oh, I don't know, combine it up with uh, Eve Online, it's kind of where they're headed with it. Okay, that that's ambitious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice, so, nice. yeah, having a lot yeah. of fun. Um, get, getting to work, like I said, on, on a lot of different things. It's kind of cool. Uh, being part of a team uh, is a blast, you know. Uh, but knowing that I'm going to do six weeks here and four weeks there and three weeks here, and I get to touch all these different communities and yep. and games has has been a real blast too. And you also have been able to do some kind of hobby projects. I know while you were here. You, I really saw your passion develop for um, RC aircraft and things like that. That's <laughs> yep. still going strong, right? That, that's still yep. going strong. Uh, I'm actually in my fifth year as a uh, club president for uh, the local RC club uh, here. So uh, they they foolishly reelected me for another year. So nice. And and you do have kind of a, lo- a Lego related thing going on too, right? I do. So yeah. I've I've always liked Legos. Everybody likes Legos. Um, and I went on vacation, I guess, the end of last year, and I've always been looking for something because at one point in time while working, I was traveling a tremendous amount. Um, I, I traveled almost uh, 180 nights in a single year um, when I was working uh, for Extra Life. And I always wished I had had something that I could just sort of prop up and take photos of because I don't like doing the selfie thing. That's that's not me. And I came across a minifig that sort of summed me up really well. It was a, a little pilot. So I have this little Lego minifig pilot. And uh, he went on vacation uh, with my wife and I. And, and uh, he was the focus of, of all of our vacation photos. Oh, nice. and, and at first, I, I got a lot of grief from her and, and uh, my, my sister-in-law. And then what ended up happening was, well, aren't you going to take a picture with him here? And... It's kind of blown into this this thing where now he's got his own Facebook page. He's got his own Instagram. Uh, my uh, my better half is currently on a trip in Italy, and she took a female minifig with her and is sending me back pictures. So it, it's become this silly thing that that's a lot of fun and people seem to like. So if you want to pimp a URL or something, yeah, want to pimp a URL? Um, if you look for the uh, the Lil L I L Adventure. Uh, on Instagram, that's uh, that's him. It's also uh, the Little Adventurer on Facebook, uh, and also the Little Adventure on Twitter. So that's cool. Uh, cool. just just silly photos of a of a Lego minifig going around the world. Well, you know, Rick, I don't think it's at all an exaggeration to say that without your long and uh, <laughs> significant work here with Lord of the Rings Online, that this community would not be as amazing as it is and so we all owe you a big debt of gratitude and a heartfelt thank you for helping uh helping lotro achieve what it has thank you oh well thank thanks guys oh hey i hear jacob back there (laughs) yeah (laughs) all right i think Uh, i'm going to let you go unless you have any kind of final thoughts uh not really i i'm kind of looking forward to uh to the next 10 years cool i was just gonna i thought you were gonna end (laughs) that sentence with you going in game and crashing the worlds that would be fun. You gonna do that? <laughs> yeah, I am gonna be going in game here, probably just a little bit. So nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thanks, Rick, very much for joining me, uh, Sapiens. It was great to talk to you, and I'll talk to you again soon. All right, man. Thanks for inviting me. Yep. Much love, everybody. All right. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna load up a few more screenshots, a little bit of music. I'm going to take uh, another short break. Let's just, let's call it 10 minutes, and I'm going to get the in-game client ready to go. We'll come back.